Hey everyone, I'm Kristen McGlory back with another Genius Recipe. And this month I am focusing on the most incredible birthday cake. It's light, it's fluffy, it's entirely make ahead friendly. And it comes from Shilpa Iskokovic at Bon Appetit. So hers is a super light, airy raspberry cake with whipped cream filling. And mine is a nostalgic riff, a rainbow jelly cream cake. This is also a tale about motherhood and it has a happy ending. Okay, so let's get started. Separating these eggs is the first thing. Whites are going in here, yolks are going in here. And I first stumbled on this cake when my daughter requested for many months a pink strawberry cake. And I told my own mom this, and she saw this gorgeous cake that Shilpa at Bon Appetit had developed for a raspberry cream cake. It's a thing of beauty. It's gloriously pink. And really everyone at her birthday party absolutely fell in love with this cake. And I don't think that I can make another birthday cake for her going forward. A lot of where this cake gets its incredible fluffiness from is making a meringue. So that's why we have these egg whites here. They are at room temperature. And then I'm going to add some sugar and some salt and some cream of tartar, which is a weak acid that's gonna help lower the pH and help make the meringue super stable. Okay, so this I'm going to first beat it slowly for about 30 seconds just to break up the egg whites. And then I'm going to turn it up to medium high and beat it until it forms stiff peaks. And I'll show you what those look like. So that took my mixer about five minutes, but really just watch out for the visual cues and you'll be set. It should be pale, white, fluffy. It should hold that stiff peak and really give a little bit of resistance when you're picking up the whisk. <laughs> and now that is just gonna hang out while we move on to the yolks. I would love to show you one of my favorite tricks that I learned in culinary school. And the one that I still use probably most to this day, which is if you need to keep a bowl steady while you are whisking, take a towel, make it damp, and then pull it into these corners and then whip it around <laughs> like this. So you get kind of like a little kerchief and then wrap it around the base of your bowl. You're making a little nest and that's gonna help keep your bowl from skidding all over while you're whisking. For this part of the cake, we have yolks, we have sugar, and they are going to magically transform as we whisk. Okay, so these are gonna start out yellow, gritty, and as we whisk, I love Shilpa's description. They are going to become kind of creamy and billowy and look like ribbons fluttering in the breeze. So this is probably gonna take about two minutes and I do have to take breaks <laughs> because I'm a little bit of a wimp. All right, I think that looks pretty ribbony. And then going to add in some water, oil, and vanilla in the next part of this. And I just put them all in the same measuring cup so that they're easy to whisk in together. The fact that there is oil in this cake instead of butter is key to its genius. And it makes so much sense. It's one of those genius details that I absolutely love because if you think about it, butter in the fridge is solid. Oil, not so much. So if you have a cake going into the fridge and being served cold, that butter is going to make it kind of like heavy, clammy almost. The oil keeps it light and super fresh even hours, even days later in the fridge. It is amazing. Okay, so you just want this to combine nicely. And then we are going to sift in some cake flour and baking powder. And Shilpa says that she doesn't usually bother with sifting, but because cake flour is a little bit clumpy, it's nice to get all of those lumps out. And we're using cake flour because it is going to make a super tender, fluffy cake. And baking powder for just a little more insurance that you're gonna have lift. Okay, now we are sifting over. Can't forget this that already fell through the sifter. Ooh. And now this I'm just gonna vigorously whisk to combine. All right, that is really nicely combined. So now we're going to fold in all of our gorgeous billowy meringue. And we're gonna start with about a quarter of it. We're not gonna stress too much about being gentle with our fold. And then that will make the whole thing lighter and easier to fold in the rest of the meringue. And don't worry about getting it 
all the way to perfectly combined, no streaks. Some streaks are great and will keep you from totally deflating your meringue. So I'm actually gonna keep using this whisk attachment for my next couple folds. And I'll just start to be more gentle with it. Basically, we're trying to preserve all those precious air bubbles that we worked so hard to get into our meringue. Okay, I think this is my last, my last go with the whisk and then I'll switch over to the spatula. And I will say, yes, there is an ideal of having these super fluffy layers, but I've also totally screwed this cake up. <laughs> and I have folded in the meringue before putting the flour in and I had to sort of backtrack. And it may not have been as fluffy, but it totally worked. And with all of that whipped cream frosting, nobody complained. So now that our batter is ready, we are going to divide it between two eight inch, not nonstick and not greased cake pans. They just have a little parchment liner in the bottom to help them pop out. But it's important that they not be greased or nonstick because you want the cake to be able to climb up the sides. You could weigh this if you wanted to be very precious about it, but I'm gonna have faith in my ability to eyeball and also know that this is going to be a homemade looking cake no matter what, and that's great. So these are ready to go in the oven. The oven is at 350. They're gonna be in there for about 15 minutes at that temp, and then we're gonna reduce it to 325. And then it can take up to 35 or 40 minutes, but I think it's really important to watch for those visual cues that it's golden brown, that it springs back a little bit when you press it lightly in the center, because depending on your oven, your cake pans, your batter, it might happen faster. So you definitely don't want to go too far with these cakes. All right, while those cakes are baking, let's make our whipped cream frosting and filling. So the very first thing we're gonna do is take these freeze-dried raspberries, which you can tell they're very different from the fresh raspberries we're also going to be using. All right. oh, so these have the most intense fruity flavor, the deepest color, and they are totally dry, so they are going to be doing this magical thing to whipped cream. If you were just to frost a cake with whipped cream, it would look lovely, taste great for a very short period, but then if you stick it in the fridge, it's gonna start to collapse, get grainy, it's gonna weep. This frosting stays stable and fluffy and creamy in the fridge for hours and even days. It is a miracle. And the very first thing we're gonna do is grind this up and then we're gonna add it to the whipped cream. <laughs> This is gonna be kind of cool. You'll see a cloud of pink come out probably. Okay, so because raspberries have seeds that you might not wanna be crunching on in your fluffy frosting, Shilpa has us strain out the seeds. Oh, and you know what? I should get those cakes out of the oven. Ooh, okay. These are looking and smelling amazing. And they're golden brown and, oh yeah, look at that. Fully cooked cake under there. Not batter. So then Shilpa has us cool these upside down on a rack, and that is to prevent collapsing. It's gonna help the cake hanging down low instead of, as it cools, crumpling down into the pan. So these are gonna need to cool for a good hour or so. They just need to be totally cool before we frost the cake. So we have our gorgeous pink sugary powder, and now we're just gonna add whipping cream and a little bit of vanilla and salt. And now we just need to whip it until we have stick peaks again. Okay. I'm seeing stiff peaks. You just want to be able to hold a shape on the cake. And if you have a kid who has requested a pink birthday cake, they are gonna be very happy with this frosting. Okay, so frosting is made, and then I'm just going to make the filling, which is simply just some raspberry jam and some fresh raspberries. <laughs> okay. And Shilpa says that the raspberry jam is just to kind of intensify the flavor of the raspberries. And it sort of helps glue the whole thing together too. And then I'm going to pour in my fresh raspberries. 
And this is where this cake is so friendly to other fruit, any fresh fruit you fancy and any freeze dried fruit you can find will work here. Okay, so we have our frosting, we have our filling and our cooled cakes. We have everything we need to make our beautiful their cake. Time to unmold our cakes and get this beauty together. So these are fully cooled and all we need to do is run an offset spatula or just a table knife around the edge to loosen them. And then that parchment circle on the bottom should help them slide right out, hopefully. Let's see. Oh yeah. Ooh. So if you do have a bit of a hollow, I like to put that facing up to catch all of that filling. And you can see I'm using these little parchment scraps. These were left over from one of the times that I cut out the eight inch circle to line the cake pan. Okay, so frosting time. We're gonna start with a heaping cup full of this frosting smoothed right over the middle of the cake. And an offset spatula is extremely handy for frosting cakes. But if you don't have one, you can just wing it with a spoon or a table knife or a silicone spatula that you would use for baking. And then the filling, Shilpa says to leave a one inch porter around the edge and just pile it up in the center. And that way, when you put the top layer on, it's not gonna be smushing raspberries out the sides. Now this next layer can go on. Again, if you have a, a bit of a hollow, that can just kind of cradle the filling and you can put your flatter part up top. So I should probably tell you all about what happened the first time I made this for my daughter's third birthday party. She had been asking for a pink strawberry cake for months. I made it day of the party. Everyone was so excited about it. And then when I brought it out, you know, it was my daughter's first big gathering and she was totally overwhelmed and she would not try one bite. Partly that was also because our family friend Desiree had brought these beautiful, brightly colored gelatins called gelatinas. All my daughter wanted was to try every flavor of those. And I think that was probably her first experience of a jello-like food. But once I moved on and gave up on that dream of having her taste this birthday cake, it actually led me to the inspiration for our second cake in this video today. And I'll explain more when we get there. And you know what? This year, she asked for the pink cake again and she ate every bite. Okay, I think I'm about there with my very homemade, swoopy, fluffy bonbon of a cake. Um, and I can try and slide these little plate protectors out. And then it just needs to chill in the fridge for at least two hours to really firm up, meld together, thoroughly chill all the way through, since that is what it wants to be. A chilled, creamy, fluffy, perfect cake. The first thing I'm gonna do is make the jellies. So I have pineapple juice and carrot juice. Those were the two colors I chose for this cake, but you can really take it whatever direction you want. Dump some pineapple juice along with some sugar and some agar agar powder. And give that a whisk and then heat it up over medium high. A little bit more about that agar agar powder. It's a vegetarian substitute for gelatin because it's derived from seaweed. And so you can find it in Asian grocery stores, in health food stores, sometimes in the bulk bins. This is now at a good rolling boil, which is important for setting agar agar. So once it hits that point where it's boiling, go for about five minutes to make sure that it's gonna set. While I have heard that agar sometimes doesn't set when it's in the presence of highly acidic fruits like citrus, a little bit of lemon juice here to brighten it up has worked out just fine for me. Okay, and now I can just pour it right into one of these molds. And by molds, I just mean a cake pan. So now I'm gonna go straight back into the pan, not even gonna bother washing it with the carrot juice for the other color of the jellies. Same deal, just give it a whisk, bring it up to a rolling boil. If you can't find agar agar, or you just really want the bouncy texture of gelatin, feel free to use old fashioned jello, make a homemade version. I'm gonna add the lemon juice to this one too. And then pour it off to set. 
and it will actually set as soon as it cools off, even at room temperature, but it'll set quicker in the fridge. So what I like to do is just leave it out until it's not really steamy hot anymore and then stick it in the fridge to cool off while you finish making the rest of the cake. So these jellies are fully cooled, nice and solid, and I'm going to just unmold them and cut them into little cubes. Just gonna go for it. Woo! <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna be aiming for roughly third inch cubes, but you do whatever you feel. You can save the cubiest looking ones for the outside of the cake and the wonkier looking ones for inside the filling. You should have fun with any juices you want, any flavors you want, um, any combination. These are all ready to go into our filling and to decorate the outside of the cake too. And now we just need to make the frosting to stir them in. Just like Shilpa's raspberry cream frosting, this one is made with another freeze dried fruit. This time it's dried peaches. To these peaches, I'm going to add some sugar that we're gonna to grind together. So that I think is good to go. All ground up and now we'll just dump straight into the food processor, the cold heavy cream and the salt and the vanilla. And the reason we're able to do this all in the food processor is because there are no hard seeds to strain out like we had to do with the raspberry version. Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at that. Okay, frosting is done, jellies are done. Now we're just gonna combine them to make the filling and frost our cake. Unlike in Chilpa's cake where we took a cup full of frosting and had it be our base layer, I wanted to create that sort of stained glass effect of the jello that I remembered from being a kid and kind of mix the jellies into the whipped cream. So that's the first thing we gotta do. Might not look like much right now, but hopefully when we go to slice it, you'll get to see that cross section of all these little cubes. Okay, we can assemble our cake now. So this is the same exact beautiful chiffon cake that I used for Shilpa's cake earlier. This is what makes it such a beautiful template for mixing and matching different flavors and colors and fruits and juices. Now I'm gonna sneak out these parchment protectors. Now here is going to be our little clue about what is inside of this cake. I'll tell you what my daughter's reaction was this year. I made the pink cake, she devoured it. Major triumph, just had to wait a year for her to be ready to eat that cake in all its glory. But when I told her that I was doing this next and putting her gelatinas in a cake. She was not having it. I think this is probably very familiar to parents out there that they like this thing and this thing and this thing separately, but you put them together, no way. No. Happy Remember this one? Do you remember this one? Yeah. Have you tried this one before? No. <laughs> Do you want to try it? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, great. So these have been chilling for at least two hours. I'm not sure how long really, but at least two hours. So they're good and cold. And we have a special guest to help me taste them. My daughter, who is now, how old are you? Four. Which one do you want to try first? This one, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. Well, this is such a happy cake. Um, I actually, this is actually my first time trying the raspberry version because we always have made it with strawberries. It's so good. It's got that little bit of tartness and juiciness from the raspberries. Um, but obviously not so tart as to interfere with the delightful sweetness, as you can tell. <laughs> Do you want to taste the other one now? Okay. This one is peach frosting. What? <laughs> yeah. It's yummy. 
you go. Okay. <gasps> Inside Jello. Inside Jello. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Good. Good? I like the pancake more. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with my version of Shilpa's cake too. It just jumped off from all of the amazing things about her cake, the, the light fluffy layers, the super fruity, creamy, luscious frosting that's holding it all together. Thank you so, so much, especially to Shilpa Uskokovic for sharing this recipe with us, for making this recipe that has become- Yummy. <laughs> <laughs> Yummy and legendary in our family. Be sure to hit like and subscribe for all the genius recipes and anything else? Good. Good, good, and it's all good. Cakes are good.